Um, my name is Doug Tartar, like tartar sauce. Uh, I'm with uh, Coldwell Banker Realty. Uh, been doing this a, a little while. Um, and so is the one thing I really like in this class is I like to be able to answer any and all questions, whether they're in Spanish or not. If they're in Spanish, I'll just make it up. So, <laughs> just kidding. <clears throat> all right, so... I always bring these two. Um, so you guys have your contracts in front. Okay. So <clears throat> if we go back to like the early 80s, real estate used to be one page about that big. Kind of like your car. You know, when you sell your car, you just sign the back and you hand them the title. That's, that's how it was. So the contract, these nice six pages, are all done because of lawsuits at some point. So that's why, we're, that's why they're here. That's why we're going over them, is the legal side of things. So <clears throat> the first place we want to start is we're going to start with this little box up top. It's called earnest money. Okay, your earnest money is a deposit on the, on the house, but it's due only when it's, you say it's okay. So, Hector, right? Okay. So, if Hector is selling me his house, if, if I go to Hector and say, Hector, I want to buy your house, and I'm going to put $500 in earnest money, as a down payment, or Victor comes to you and says he wants to buy it, but he's going to give you, he's going to put $5,000 as a deposit. Which one are you, do you think is more serious about buying your house? The 5000 right? So that, <coughs> that can play into uh, buying the house especially if the housing market is really aggressive, like two years ago. Um, <clears throat> so most of the time, the earnest money on average is about $1,000. So, sure. Um, so you said it's due when the buyer kind of chooses to pay, or do, when, when do you pay the earnest money? Okay, so we'll go back to... Hector sells me his house, right? He agrees. Both of us have signed the contract. Once that contract is signed, there's, you have four days to get the earnest money to the, the people. Whether Sometimes it's the title company. Sometimes, uh, like with my real estate company, the, with Coldwell Banker, we have that in the brokerage. So it would come into us. So you have four, four days, and those, are, those four days are business days. So like this last weekend, Veterans Day was Saturday, so that doesn't count. Sunday doesn't count. So if you bought, if we signed the contract Friday, that's due by Wednesday, okay? If it's not paid, then there's, it can or cannot void the contract. So it's something you want to make sure that it is paid. Okay. On the, any questions on earnest money? No, you're good. Does that count? Like, let's say we're buying the house for 300000 and you put in $1,000 earnest. Does that count towards the earnest money that you paid? You're, you're exactly right, yeah. So that, that $1,000 earnest money is acts as a deposit or a down payment. So it's not extra, it, it counts. So good question. Um, so <clears throat> as we go down the contract, let's, we're gonna slide down a little bit to the, to the bottom down here. Um, so that, that, goes, that goes to the purchase price, okay? And so it, it lists everything out. The purchase price is right here. 
and then it lists everything else down this side. So it shows again, so if we'd show the 300,000, we'd show the $1,000 earnest money, and then the rest of these really should say to be determined because if you're getting a loan, it's, it talks about how much more cash are you bringing at closing. And so we're not, if you're getting a loan, you're not bringing cash, you're bringing, it's a loan. So that, that line would be to be determined there. So <clears throat> all of that's pretty, depending on the loan and what you're doing, but most of the time those are just to be determined boxes. Okay. The, the last thing on this page that is really advantageous, especially if you're renting a house right now, is right here in the middle. Because it says, do you have to sell a house to buy this one? So again, if, if me and Victor are trying to buy Hector's house, if I have to sell my house before I can get the money to buy the house, or Victor, he has the, the finances all set and is renting and just needs a month to get out of his, his lease, it's going to be more advantageous for Victor or Hector to sell to Victor because we don't know how long my house is going to take to sell. It might be fast, it might be slow. Right, right now, it's, it really is kind of, it just depends on the house itself and where. So, anyway, something good that's going on right now is that, uh, you know, you're, you're renting, you don't have to have a house to sell. Okay? Questions? You ready to sell your house, Hector? Yeah. <laughs> you're, we're getting there? Okay. Maybe you know something about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... What we're going to do is we're going to go, I'm going to mix everything up for you. So <clears throat> the middle, that's the first page. The next pages all relate back to the very last page. So page six. So let's go to page six. And, and I'll show you how this all works backwards. So on page six at the top are some dates that, that will get put in. You, got, you good, Hector? Okay. So <clears throat> these dates, and again, remember, all of this stuff happened because somebody got sued. So the, the first date on the top, uh, and typically, well, let's, let's do it this way. So typically, we'll start at the bottom. So the bottom date is when you're going to sign papers for the house. That, that's the date you sign the papers. Okay? <clears throat> so that's not the same day that you get keys. Because the house, even though you, once you sign the papers, the, house, the money all has to transfer and it has to go to the county to get recorded. So once the house is recorded, so I buy Hector's house, we sit, we sit down, we sign the papers, but we sign the papers on a Friday, the county and some, some offices are closed on Friday, so they don't record, so I can't move in until next Monday. So this part, that part, that last date is important because a lot of people think that once you sign, you get keys, and that's not true. So if, if, if you work with me, and I'd love to work with you, but if you work with me, I would have you sign Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday because then that way we have time to get it recorded, get, it, get you the keys so that you can move in that weekend. It depends. <laughs> so, it, and, and I say that, and it's really interesting because 
each county is different. So if you go, do you know where Manti is? Okay, San, San Pete County. San Pete County still does things by snail mail. Everything is slow. They, they don't work Fridays. They kind of, it, it really is just slow. And so you have to sign on Wednesday to get it recorded on Thursday to get the keys. So there's, there's just different ways, and you just need to know. But typically, the, the time, there are times if you sign at 10 o'clock in the morning and everything works perfect, it can record by that afternoon. Okay? But usually, I'm, I'm not that big of a gambler because I lose in Vegas. Every time I go to Vegas, I just lose. So I don't gamble that way because it's your money, not mine. So <clears throat> anyway, so that's, that's when you sign. Okay, so now we're going to go back up to the top. So the first one there is the seller's disclosures. Okay, and so Hector, you don't mind me using you as an example. You're okay? Okay. So, so we're buying Hector's house. Hector has until that date to give me the seller disclosures about his house. Those disclosures are everything that he's done to the house or he knows of that have happened to the house. A new roof, the basement flooded, um, I redid the kitchen. You know, yeah, so it can be good or it can be bad, either way. But not, when you do it, you don't want to do little things, you know, like the, the kids splashed water out of the bathtub. That doesn't, everybody does that. It's just the big stuff. So with the seller disclosures then, uh, by that date, so Hector gives us the seller disclosures, and when we went through the house, everything looked great, but he tells us that the basement flooded five years ago and that nothing has had been repaired. Okay? So, I think it says Megan, is that right? So then, Megan, you just made, you made a noise. What, verbalize it for me. What were you thinking? Well, that that's quite unfortunate because there's probably lots of water damage and there's something wrong with the house that we didn't know about when we put on maybe offer. Absolutely, right? So you don't know, and usually if there's water and it sits, that means mold, mildew, all kinds of gross stuff. Um, and so it can be a bad thing, uh, especially if it wasn't fixed. And so with those, those seller disclosures, if, if he says, well, the basement flooded, but I had a contractor come in, they fixed it, they repaired it, then is, the confidence comes back. It's like, okay. I'm okay with that. So, but <clears throat> if he didn't fix it and Megan says, oh no, that's, I can't do that. I don't want to do that. Then at that point, you can tap out and say, okay, I don't want to buy the house anymore. And so with that, you cancel the contract and our, our, our $1,000 earnest money comes back to you. So you get it back. Okay. So the seller disclosures, if you look on page three, on page three, it kind of talks a little bit about what is in that seller disclosures. <clears throat> so in the seller disclosures, like we said, it's, it's anything that was constructed, repaired, redone any problems um, sometimes there's been uh, uh, with those seller disclosures sometimes the seller doesn't know because the house has been there for a long time um, <clears throat> in, to give you an example down in Payson um, there's a I know of about six or seven houses that were bought in the 1930s out of the Sears catalog. 
you could buy a house out of the catalog. You know how much? Guess, guess how much? $4,000. You buy the whole house. But then Sears would put it on a train car and they would send you everything. They would send you all the nails, all the bricks, all the everything. And then you had to get it off and go build it. So <clears throat> in, in a seller disclosure form, that, that all sounds good. But I don't know how good of a builder that guy was. You know, back, back then, most everybody was pretty good with their hands or had friends that would help and stuff. But we don't know. So it, it's something then we'd want to make sure we'd want to go to the second item on that back page. The second item, which is the buyer's disclosure. Okay, so the buyer's disclosure. <clears throat> so that goes back to Victor. That's you and your team buying Hector's house. And so we go look at the house. We, we take what he's told us and then we go look. So we have an inspector that goes and looks for mold, mildew, radon, all of those types of things. Looks for the cracks in fa the foundation. We look at the property line. Because a lot of times in the older homes, especially older homes, the property lines were not drawn until years later. And so sometimes there, there's, especially up in Salt Lake, old downtown Salt Lake, they have property lines that they have, the, the property is here and the neighbor's garage sits and straddles the property line because it was built before the property line was put in. Just something to know. But again, if that, if that gives, gives us heartburn that says, no, we don't want to buy that because that doesn't look right, with that buyer's uh, disclosures, we can back out and you get your earnest money back. Okay? <clears throat> so typically to do that home inspection is about $500 and they'll come through and look at everything. Um, sometimes it doesn't matter. I'm going to, I'll give you another example. In Nephi, I had a couple that was buying a house, just a little house, <clears throat> liked the house. We looked at it. The inspector came in and it, it just looked kind of funny because it, the house had been raised and then they put more concrete around the foundation. But they put the, fa the concrete around the outside of the foundation, but nothing in the middle. <clears throat> and in the middle, they had rocks and things stacked up in the middle to hold up the middle of the house. So <clears throat> that was the first question. Then we start looking, and it's, I, I start looking with the rest of the, the team, and it says the house was built in 1942 but it said it was built in Nephi. Well, as we start looking, it wasn't built in Nephi. It was built in Delta. In 1942, during World War II, all the Japanese people got put together and got sent to an internment camp in Delta, and they built houses. <clears throat> when the war was over, they, everybody went home, and they sold those houses and they just went everywhere. So there's about six of them in Nephi. There's some of them in, they're all over this around here. But it, none of the paperwork said that it was built in Delta and moved. And it didn't say that it was raised. So as we start looking at it, there's more and more issues that this, the people that were buying the house said, this looks a little goofy. And so they, decided to cancel and back out. So, and then they got their earnest money back. Okay. The, the, the third, oh well. And then if we go, let's go back to this page, back page three. So just under that seller disclosure part, it has the buyer's conditions. 
So it just talks about some of the buyer conditions that, that apply. <clears throat> with, with me in real estate, the, you know, I've, I mentioned that we, we've got a team that works together. The team, you guys were talking a little bit before I got here about title. The title company, and, and I, I love Catherine, but she said that you could use the other, the, the seller's title company. Don't do that because you want somebody to represent you, not somebody that's representing them. <clears throat> because in, in, in a negotiation or a contract, you don't, if you, if you go to court, you don't want the same lawyer that the other guy has, right? You want to be able to be represented correctly. And that, and so anyway, have your own title, have your own real estate, have your own, do your own team <clears throat> so that it works. So on, on my team, I've got one of the best title companies and people, she's been in the business for 35 years and knows more about real estate than I'll ever know. She's fantastic. I have a, a, an inspector <clears throat> that knows <clears throat> all kinds of different things about houses. And he also knows the things to be concerned about. Um, I was helped a family buy a house in down in Ephraim. The house was built when the pioneers got here. It it literally the the foundation was rocks, and then they had tree trunks across for the the foundation the the base of the house, and then they built. <clears throat> well, in an old house. A lot of times there's asbestos, there's different things that today we consider not very healthy. But as we went through, he talked to the people and said, well, just don't touch it. Don't go roll in the, in the insulation and you're, you're fine. Don't play in it. You know, um, a lot of times you'll see houses with the ceiling, they call it popcorn ceilings. The, that's asbestos. Um, <clears throat> again, leave it alone and it's fine, but it, it's only dangerous when it's airborne. And so when they come in to take that off of the ceiling, that, that's why if you've ever watched, they'll, they'll squirt it with water and then they just shave it or take it off. And then that way there's no dust, but they still are wearing the hazmat suits when they do that. So. Anyway, so <clears throat> so does the buy is the buyer paying for the title transfer like like is that the title paying for that's a great question. It it really is because <clears throat> it all balances because in in a nutshell, um, the seller has to provide title insurance. And so he's paying for that, but the buyer also has to pay for closing costs and some additional things with their title company. But it all gets wrapped up in the purchase price or the closing price, which is coming out of the loan and, or most of the time, or out of cash to close. So, yeah. So, so anyway, so the seller's disclosures, Buyer's disclosures, you can get your earnest money back, no problem. Number three is, the, is your finance and the appraisal. So the finance is your mortgage. So um, with every once in a while, we'll see somebody, we'll, they'll, they'll go buy a house, I had a guy do this. He went, bought a house, and then he thought it'd be a great idea to go buy a new truck. So he's under contract, buys a new truck, and he can't afford both the truck and the new house. And so he lock, he had to back out of the house. Um, and so with that, the or if you lose a job or something in this process, before that finance date, you can, again, get your earnest money back and everything's good. 
The next part of that is the appraisal. The appraisal or appraiser is the one that does, they're the ones that create everything as far as the price. The appraiser will look backwards in time, two months, three months, six months, and, and compare everything to get to a price. <clears throat> in two years ago, when the market was going really crazy and everything went, the everything was real fast, they would look backwards, but the prices were lower than they were as they were going up. And so they weren't getting things real accurate. Now things have, have leveled off and they're kind of coming down even a little bit. So it's a little easier, but your appraiser is the one that sets the price. Um, <clears throat> when with that appraiser, usually we can't, we don't dictate who that is. The mortgage company, the finance company, they just send, have one and send somebody out. So we don't know who that is. We can't tell them all the good things about the house. We can't tell them what's happened to the house. But they, that appraiser sets the price. And usually, usually they're pretty, everybody's pretty close and pretty accurate that way. If something happens and that price does not match, then that goes back to the buyer and the seller. <clears throat> I was selling a house for a gentleman, had the appraiser came in and the, he appraised it $17,000 lower than the people that agreed to buy it. And so the buyers then said, well, they wanted the price dropped 17,000. My seller said no. And so, they decided that they would stay at the seven at the price, and they would the buyers would pay the seventeen thousand because there were, just weren't any other houses on the market, so they were kind of stuck. <clears throat> um, and so, those negotiations happen, and the the nice thing in working with a good team is those negotiations. You don't have to do the negotiations, or you don't have to tell somebody bad news. You let me do it, or your realtor do it, and. And so it all works that way. That, that finance and appraisal date is the last date that you can get your earnest money back. After that, the earnest money goes to the seller. Okay. Um, as you go through the, some of the rest of the pages in here, and I'm just going to skip through them a little bit. There's one spot in there that talks about the home warranty. Um, I would definitely recommend doing that. It's fairly inexpensive to do a home warranty, but it's nice because it covers you for a year and it covers all the your water heater, your furnace, the air conditioner, all the appliances that would be expensive if they broke that first year. Um, so that's, that's there. <clears throat> and then, well, now, now we're going to move on. So <laughs> I, one of the things I like to do, and I'm just going to hand these out real quick, and, and they have the contract on top, but we're going we're gonna to go beyond the contract. Okay, this is the fun part of the class. So we're going to go to page seven in there. It looks like this with minus the green. So what I did yesterday, I printed off actual properties and houses for sale here in Utah County. So these are actual houses, but I, I wanted to go through and, and let's... I want to show you what's here so you can understand how to look for stuff. The first thing I'm going to tell you and beg you is do not look at Zillow, Realtor, Trulia, any of those other websites. 
because they pull the, their, inf their information from the Utah real estate website. Utah real estate is where all of the real estate companies put information. That, that's where price changes happen. That's where everything happens. Zillow Realtor, they don't go and pick off and, and update the information very often. And so if we were doing a, a, an open house at Hector's house and we put it on here, it's not going to show on Zillow because Zillow doesn't pick it up and, and adjust. So <clears throat> stay with the Utah real estate. It's the most accurate and the best. So um, <clears throat> first thing we're going to do, right up on the top up here, it has the price, okay? So this one says $105,000, okay? Good price, right? Okay. <clears throat> Can you buy that with a mortgage? Good answer. Yeah, it's a mobile home. It has wheels or can have wheels. And so mortgage companies will not finance it. Okay. It, they treat them just like a car. So you'd have to have more of a car loan to buy trailers. Um, there's still, you know, there's still a good, a good price, a good deal. And some, there's some decent ones out there. But so the next thing we want to do is go right under the price and it says price per. That price per is referring to the square feet of the house. Okay. In the state of Utah, in the whole state, right now the price per square foot is $229 a square foot, is what is the average. So that's the million dollar homes in Park City, as well as the trailer houses here. I mean, it's an average, right? So, it, but it gives us a, a, a good idea what to look at. So <clears throat> this one at $75 a square foot, it is got a good price to it per square foot. The next one underneath there, the DOM, the so days on market. So that tells us how long it's been on the market, how long it's been for sale. So at three days, if, if we went to these people and said, we'll buy this for $90,000, where it's only been on the market for three days, do you think they would be willing to sell it for $90,000? No. But if it had been on for four months, Maybe, right? So that's that's an important thing to look at there. <clears throat> right here in the middle is is a nice little word called HOA. Okay? Your HOA it has the price right there next to it. That price gets added to your mortgage. So if I'm buying a house and the my mortgage company says I can Buy it, buy for $2,000 a month is, is my payment. And that's what I'm approved for. <clears throat> when you add 460 or whatever that number is, I, without my glasses, <laughs> um, you have to add that into the mortgage. And so instead of being $2,000, I would have to pay the $2,455. And that may not that may make it to where I can't afford it, according to the mortgage company. <clears throat> Over on this side of the box, on the that side of the box there, is the what it's called, you know, the type of home. Like Hector said, it says mobile. <clears throat> it also tells us what year it was made or bore or built there. And then in the box. It gives us just the quick details, bedrooms, bathrooms, how many square feet, gives us some details. <clears throat> the other place to look, that I want you to look, is right down here, about halfway down, it says terms. 
Okay? <clears throat> so it says cash and conventional. So what that tells us is that it has you have to come with cash or like a 20% down payment on in order to purchase it. So it doesn't have like some of the other things that we can find with regular homes. Okay. <clears throat> the the other thing on this whole page that next page, top of the next page. If it has wheels, it's a car. Even with land. Even with land. Yep. Yep. Now you know they may sell just the land and have and the sell the seller may take the the mobile home with them, and then you just have the land. That that's different, and that could happen. But most of the time, it it's not. Or, or can I get a loan over the land only? Not with that. It, you would take possession of both. If it, if there's a mobile home on it, typically they'll they'll sell it with that, and so you have both. And and they won't. Most of the time, they won't do those separate. The land and the the house. It's all one. Or if I, I can I get a loan for the land and make a deal with the seller for the mobile? Sure. But different. No? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We there there are thousands of ways to make a deal work. <laughs> so whether that's cash, you know, trade them a horse for the, the mobile home, whatever. There's all kinds of ways to make that happen. So okay, Megan. Okay, remember when we talked about the fact that you sign the papers? but you don't get the keys. So <clears throat> signing the paper, the, the house goes to the county to get recorded. Mm -hmm. So as soon as it's recorded in your name, then you take possession. Got it. So, so this one's saying recording, it means that it's still, in the, like the county hasn't recorded it? Yet. No, all they're doing is they're just they're just telling you. So, so sometimes, um, <clears throat> let's go back to Hector for a minute, selling his house. So, Hector's selling his house, but he needs a week to move his stuff out of the house. And so there it would say possession would be seven days after recording. We, and you can, those dates can go up to 30 days, but not over. Because if Hector needed three months, then there's a whole different form that goes for renting back to Hector. Okay. So in in the world of real estate, well, in in our world, real estate agents, me, there's there's not very many people that know what you make at work. I just don't. I don't know what Hector makes. I don't know what Victor makes. I don't know what Megan makes. But on that second page, it tells you exactly what I would make to help you buy the house. So right up at the top up there, it says BAC. That's Buyer's Agent Commission. And it says 3%. So that 3% then includes... All the things we've just talked about, all the the help, the team, the time, you know, all of that stuff to come together, but that's where that comes into play. But that that commission is paid by the seller, not by the buyer. So, and that goes back to one of Ammon's questions because it's you know. <clears throat> It's paid by the, the seller is the one that agrees to it. And the seller is the one that technically pays for the commission. But it's wrapped up in the price of the house. So the buyer actually pays for it. So it's like, take your pick, right? Which way do you want to work? 
Okay. So let's go to number two in there. So the, the second one, as is, is we start at the top, is 305,000. It's $292 a square foot. So, so how much was our average that we talked about? 229. So that's a little higher than the average. And, and sometimes, most of the time, new construction is. And this isn't new construction, but new construction can be more. And then if we go to the days on the market, 123 days. So it's been on the market for four months. So Hector, can we get a deal on this one where it's been there four months? Possibly. Possibly, right? <clears throat> the HOA is 205 a month. And then right under the HOA there, it, it talks about the amenities. So it tells us what comes with it. So sometimes your uh, an HOA, they pay for the water, they pay for trash, they pay for cable, they pay for di different things that may you normally, if you bought a, a different house with no HOA, you would have to pay for. So it's nice to be able to kind of see what they're covering. Okay. <clears throat> this one, as we go to the middle, is a condo. So a condo means that there's no garage, typically. So it's a, usually a carport or just open parking. And this one was built in 1993. So we've got three, we've got four, uh, a thousand square feet. We've got three bedrooms. Okay, the next one, it says bath at the top, right? Okay, the first one is a full bath. The F is full. That means, that means bathtub, okay? So it has one bathroom with a bathtub. <coughs> the next one is a shower. So it's a bathroom with a shower. No bathtub, a shower. And then the, the H is for half, so that's just a toilet. No shower, no tub. Okay? So they want us to separate those out. That'd be a full. Yeah, you, you always default to the, the up one, top one, not... You, yeah, you, you don't want it to go down that way. <laughs> so... Default up. Um, <clears throat> if we go to the terms again, it says cash and conventional. So in a in a condo, sometimes the the whole condo complex, the whole all the buildings, they have a limit on people that rent. So an investor that buys multiples and rents them and people that own. So there's a percentage. And this one's telling us that that percentage is off. And so they're only looking at an investor. They're not looking at an individual to buy. So just some added things there. One, one thing to look here too, it, just above the terms, it says inclusions. The inclusion tells us what, you know, what Hector is including in his house that he's selling to us. So he's including the dryer, the microwave, the range, the refrigerator, and the washer. So that may be good. That may be bad. I, I've, I was in a house uh, last Friday that <coughs> the washer and dryer were a out of 1970s it was they were yellow 
It used to be yellow. <laughs> it was bad. So you don't want those to stay. <laughs> they need to go. So anyway. So that's that's there. Um, <clears throat> the the third one is an individual house. And that's in Orem. And the reason the reason I wanted to show this one too is this little house. It, <clears throat> this looks like that house that I was telling you guys about from Delta. That's kind of what this looks like, a little bitty house. So, but with as you go through, you have the price per is $475 a square foot. That's a little house on a big, on a lot of land, or more land. So that's probably not good. Probably too much money for the house. Um, we're back there toward the back, Mackenzie. Okay. <clears throat> So, but this one, this house, if we look right here, with a little black eye, was built in 1953. And with that black eye, that tells us that because it was built before 1978, that it may have lead paint in the house. Okay? Lead paint <coughs> is something that just needs painted over and you're fine. You don't want you just don't want to eat the paint that flakes off. Um, I, I was told in one of the classes I have to take that, that that lead paint tastes like candy. I don't know what adult tested that. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't me. So anyway, but that's what that little black thing means is there's more information about that one with the lead paint. Now, if we go on the house, if we go down to the terms, the terms tell us cash, conventional, FHA, and VA. So the FHA and VA means that first-time home buyers can buy it. It means anybody can buy it. Veterans, the VA is a veteran uh, mortgage. But so that gives us the ability to anybody can buy that house. We don't have to worry about investors or anything. Um, and uh, Megan, back to yours. It says possession, seventy-two hours. Right? They need the three days to be able to out. So again, so if you know that and you want to move in on the weekend, that means that we probably want to close on a Tuesday. So that way they can have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then they're gone, and then you move in on the weekend. So just those, those types of things come into play. All right, and then we're going to look at the last one. The very last page is new construction. New construction is a whole different, different contract. They can, the contracts can go... 20 pages to 60 pages. Um, the con the your your new construction is is nice because if you get a, into new construction and you you purchase the contract while they're building it, it's yours right up there. You have a down payment and then it's you don't have to worry about finances until you close. Um, in in our world today, the other reason I put this in is right now everybody's talking about interest rates and how interest rates are high. DR Horton, um, there's three or four builders right now that are offering 5.99% interest rates if, if you buy new construction. So to get in at six versus to get uh, rather than seven and a half, I mean, that's three to four hundred dollars a month on your payment just to be able to come in the other advantage on the new construction is you get new appliances new new oven new uh, dishwasher 
And so, and they'll come with a warranty. The, the home comes with a warranty from the builder. Uh, so new construction isn't, isn't a bad idea. And it's kind of a nice way to be able to, to buy something and then wait, you know, a little bit in, in order to move in. And I, I would rather move into something new than something built in 53 that may have dead bodies buried in the basement. But I'm kidding. Well, not so much. Not so much. <laughs> It says zero because they don't know. They're they're building it. So when they build build things until there's a physical address, mm -hmm. they don't have um, like a tax ID number. They don't have. They'll have a building lot mm -hmm. or and the building development, but they don't have the exacts. So that's why it says that. So, but, but that brings up another point. Usually on new construction, you walk in and they have a home there that's set up with a display and they usually have a, a real estate agent there that can help you, right? That real estate agent, again, works for the builder. He doesn't work for you. He'll help you and, and he'll help you. And, and that's great because that means that they don't have to, they don't have to pay another realtor to represent you. But if something's wrong, something doesn't work, they put something wrong, uh, they, it's wrong measurements, wrong dimensions, whatever, you're not being represented. You're, you have to li go through with them and their, their agent. <laughs> so in real estate today, the one thing I, I'm going to end with is real estate is the one area that everybody that is has been successful is has real estate and so it's a when is the right time to get into real estate it's when as soon as you can um, because if you look I, I bought my house 22 years ago my house is worth four times what I paid for it today you can't do that in the stock market. You can't do that in any other financial aspect, but you can do it in real estate. I had a son buy a house last February. He, his house, just because he bought and it was new construction and others got built, his, he's, uh, has $30,000 in equity and he hasn't done anything other than just pay his, his house out. So, Real estate is a very important place to be. Uh, and so I'd encourage you as soon as you can to get in there. And I'd encourage you, if there's any questions you have, anything like that, call me. My card's right over there. I'm happy to answer questions, just whatever. So. Just a serious question. My beautiful loved one has an HOA of 95 uh, a month. Right. In your experience, you think that increase when it's done? <clears throat> that maybe, um, because it, they may be one of those where they're building out hundreds of of these buildings, and that when they build out big areas, the last thing they do is they'll build like their clubhouse and the swimming pool and all the fun stuff, that's last. So they may wait until the very end to increase it once that's built. There's no way to save that, huh? Mm. No. You're, you're good with the house and the HOA. Yes. Yeah. The, the HOA, uh, I mean, where I, where I live, we've got a couple little parks. There's, we don't have swimming pools or anything, but there's just a couple little parks with some toys for the kids. Been great for our kids growing up, <clears throat> but most of the HOA we pay, it, we pay for the insurance in case one of the kids breaks an arm on the swing set. It, it ha doesn't have to do with 
I mean, the mowing the lawn and stuff once in a while, but it's more for the insurance than it is anything. So, but with that $95, they don't tell us anything. Um, but in that $95, typically they, they'll pay for like the trash, they'll pay for water, they'll pay for some other things in there that in a house you're going to have to pay for separate. So it, it kind of all works. Some, sometimes they do, um, there's a, <clears throat> a townhome uh, area in Santa Quinn where they actually split the HOA. And so they have the HOA, part of it is your snow removal, your trash and stuff that way. The other part of it is like cable TV and some, some other things that way, but then they combine them for a, a payment. That one you could split if you needed to or wanted to, but most of the time it's all one. Correct. Is that the same? It's like, do you close on a loan the same day? Like, was it necessarily <clears throat> specific to closing on a loan as your home? Yeah. So as we put everything together, and Catherine was kind of talking through that is when I got here. So <clears throat> you, we're we're coming to that settlement deadline where you're going to go sign. If you go backwards three days. And your financial mortgage company will send out what they call a closing document. And that'll tell you all the financials ahead of time. And so that, and it also tells us that everybody's ready to go. They've double checked all the financials. They've run it through underwriting. They've done all the bells and whistles, made sure you didn't change jobs, all that kind of stuff. And everything's ready to go. And then you go to settlement and sign it. Then we record it with the county, then we get keys. So how do you know like a good, a good um, real estate agent versus a bad real estate agent? Boy, there's a loaded question. <laughs> um, I would tell you, the, the first thing I would tell you is if that person is genuinely gonna answer a question, or if they're gonna, if it's all about the commission and the trend. Because I mean, you just talk to somebody, you're, you're gonna be able to know, right? Because it's like talking to a used car salesman. It's like, oh, come on, let's sign this, sign this, do that, do that. And rather than just help me answer a few questions and, and stuff that way. I, I would tell you that is probably the first thing. The second thing I would tell you is just time because I've watched, there's been all kinds of different examples I can tell you. There was, a, a, we have classes that we have to take and, and recertify. Um, one of the classes I was taking was on water. And in the class, there was a brand new agent that had just helped some family buy property, 40 acres out in Gen, uh, Genola somewhere out that direction. Well, <clears throat> we're talking about water. Well, she did not know that the land and water are separate. So she told them that they that the 40 acres came with all the water they needed. Da, da, da. Well, that's not true. And so now she's in trouble because she did not know that because she's new. And so she's in trouble. She's got to figure out how to pay to get water back to the people and fulfill the promises that she made. So by having somebody that's been around and knows, um, you know, is one thing. The, the other thing that I would tell you too is there, a lot of realtors, I mean, in this, for Utah, with my license, I can sell anywhere in Utah. But I'm gonna tell you, I don't know Ogden. I can tell you most all of Utah County. I can tell you, I know the 
the South Utah County, like the back of my hand. I can tell you where houses are that are for sale right now. Um, and so to me, that's what you want to look for. Somebody that's not a used car salesman, somebody that's been around and somebody that knows where you want to look, not just somebody that's like, woohoo, you know, I, yeah, I'm, I'm in Vernal. I can help you buy in Provo, you know, <clears throat> just because it's your cousin, it doesn't help you. So anyway, I, hopefully that answered a little bit. So any other questions? In your experience, how much will be increasing prices and, and interest in this time? What do you think? You guys are asking some great questions. <laughs> and, and they're all opinion, right? So <clears throat> right now, prices are, they're, they're kind of steady. So, you know, a little bit down, kind of a little... My concern with real estate today is there's so many people that are sitting on the sideline waiting to buy real estate because they had a crazy uncle or somebody that they trusted that said, it's a bubble, interest rates are going to come back to 2%, this is going to happen, you know, and so just hold. They don't know what they're talking about. I, I do not believe ever we'll see two percent again ever i mean the last time we were that close was like four percent and that was 1972. so in my lifetime it will never go back to two i don't think that we had great interest rates because the the government was helping to buy down the interest rate and so it was artificial they were artificially pushing it down and they ran out of money so they don't have the money to push it down anymore. So that's why it's come back up and it came back up so fast. Um, and again, that's how I understand it. <laughs> um, the, but to me, I worry that everybody's sitting on the sideline right now and that if interest rates do lower, everybody's going to jump in. We don't have enough houses. And because there's not enough houses, prices are going to go like this. So what's the best moment? High interest, low price, low interest, high price. What's better? A, a nice balance, <laughs> right in between. What what works for you is, is, and to me, I would rather tell you to get in now rather than than wait for interest rates or whatever to to do whatever. So, so you get a, a better price with a higher interest than you ever seen. You negotiate like seller concessions, bring down that. So, so Hector, I'll t uh, let's do this. We're, we're going to back up three, year, two years. So, two years ago, if Victor and I are trying to buy your house again, what was going on two years ago? Great, really low interest rates, right? Prices were pretty good. But what happened is then Victor and I start to deal with cash. So Victor says, well, this, here's my offer, $5,000 earnest money. I come in and say, Hector, I'm going to do $1,000 earnest money, but I'm going to pay you $50,000 over what you're asking for your house. And so what happens is that doesn't, what you just talked about doesn't matter because you've got people with cash and out of state, all kinds of stuff happening. And the whole market changed because of the way it was being done. And so, like Catherine said, I would get in now where there's, it's more calm. There's, there's deals to be had and to be able to find uh, versus just an all out scramble. So now, <clears throat> I think, in, in my politically incorrect view, I think next summer we'll see interest rates come down because I think 
people in Washington, D.C. are going to figure out that they want to be reelected. And they're going to figure out how to get interest rates down, gas prices, food prices. They're going to try so that they because they want elected. Right. <laughs> so if you, but if you got in now and bought something now at, say, a 7 percent interest rate, and an interest rates rent in June went down to four, four and a half, five. You can refinance back down and lower your interest rate. You can't always find the house. 